Hi there Blastube, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff, and I'm here with my update video that I promised you like two weeks ago. Sorry about that. Um, I don't really have a really good reason other than... Um, I know that the last time I recorded was on a Friday, but it posted on Saturday, and then I didn't feel like recording that following Monday like 48 hours later. Um, and then... Or maybe it was a weather issue. That's probably pretty safe to assume. And then last Monday, I volunteered, excuse me, to uh, work some overtime. And so I was exhausted. Um, and I just kind of wanted to veg out before I started that overtime. So, uh, which was really good because the, the extra work, it was intense. Like, I probably won't ever do that again. My job, it's not physically demanding, but it's mentally demanding. Um, and I know that, um, like just a little side note, I, I picked up to work a 12 hour on Tuesday and by like hour nine, 10, I was like done. Like I didn't have much brain left and I was really tired. Um, so it's a good thing that I took it easy and decided not to record that Monday. Um, but the adverse effect to that is that of course there was a bit of a delay. Um, so here I am recording for you now, and uh, I should have recorded yesterday, but um, I didn't. Um, I spent uh, all like all day on Friday in the hospital. I'm okay, so don't be worried. Um, just a little thing, but nothing, nothing major. Nothing. Some antibiotics can't kick, so no big deal. Um, but I was in I was in the ER for like 12, 11 or 12 hours on Friday, which is kind of ironic. You know, you go to the ER, the emergency room, but it takes forever to do anything with the ER. I don't understand. I don't know if it's like that like everywhere in the world, but it's like that here in the States and that's just weird. But whatever, it's fine, um, because it ended up that I really wasn't in any dire need of medical attention or anything like that. So anyway, um, everything is good, but that's why I didn't record yesterday. Why I'm saying I should have is because the weather outside, it's snowing for the first time this season. I was really, really hoping that we would get through this whole winter without any snow. But that is, uh, that's not to be. So, anyway, um, so the light's going to be a little bit weird, as usual. And we'll just roll with it. Um, so what do I have for you today? I have no questions. Uh, there weren't any questions on my last video, which was kind of surprising. Just because of how long that video was. I thought for sure I'd have a multitude of questions to answer for you guys. But, um, nope, none. Um, so as always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the down, um, in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, but what do I do? I actually have some whip progress. I have some haul. Um, in those whips I have like a finish and two new starts. And then I also, sorry, um, I also am going to talk about what I'm knitting. And what I'm reading. I'm going to do that very briefly. Um, but I know that there are some people that are interested to to see the knitting. I know that a lot of times cross-stitchers are oftentimes... Um, did I just say oftentimes twice? I might have. Um, well, we're kind of multi -craftual. You know, like we do a couple of things. Um, and so I know that there are a few people that were asking to see what I was knitting. So I'll be happy to share that. And then... Lots of people were curious about what I'm reading, so I'm going to talk about that. But both of those things are going to be very brief about, um, just because I want to maintain the focus of cross-stitch here. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so you may be looking at the title of this video here and going, For the Fates, what's that about? What's that about? Tracy will understand, <laughs> um, and I will... Be sure to address that a little bit later when it's when it's more relevant. So let's get started. We'll start with my whips. 
Um, so the my week one rotation, stitch along week, and if there's leftover time, the flower of the month um, from Ellen Morristro. So uh, because these stitch alongs didn't start until mid month, um, I focused solely on my flower of the month for that first week. So here's what I got done. So this is January Carnation. And I got the whole block done. I saw this on, um, got a little extra there. Um, I saw this on, I googled this to see what other people were doing sort of for the, like if they were including the name or the month. Um, and so I just googled it and I saw somebody else doing something very similar to this but only on this side. So I was like, well, that's really cool. So what I did is I used the darkest color from the flower and used that to backstitch carnation. And then I just found a free, um, like, backstitch alphabet on the interwebs <laughs> and stitched carnation there. And then I got going on the block for February, but I stopped there. And there were a couple of reasons that I stopped there. The biggest one is that really, I kind of just wanted to work on something else. So I've decided that if I sort of set out a goal for each week of my rotation, if I reach that goal, I can move on and work on whatever I want. Uh, and so my goal for this one was to finish the block, go figure. And I did a little bit extra, and I decided to switch projects. So I did that. Uh, so this will come back out in February, probably probably late week one, but nonetheless. There's my carnation. I really like the depth of the color that's achieved. It's really, really cool. Very multi-dimensional, which, you know, it's kind of fascinating to see. Okay. So then after my, um, after the flower of the month, I decided to pull out a project that um, I've been talking about missing for a while and that's been calling to me. And I thought I'd just give it its, give it its time of day. So I pulled out my, um, this is not quite white work, by Northern Expressions Needlework. And you'll be seeing here a preview of where it was the last time you saw it. And so this is what I got done. So I had half of the Bargello panel done, and so I got that done. And I swear to you, I don't know what was holding me back on this. It took me like an hour to finish the Bargello. Uh, or is it Bargello? I don't know, in Italian, somebody who knows, Orietta or Chandra, um, double L. Or is it the ya, yeah, like in Spanish, or is it like le, you know, like two L's? I'm curious. Okay, um, so anyway, we'll just go with Bargello because that's kind of what I think it is. Anyway, finish that up real quick. Then I moved down to, um, I did the double herringbone, which is the border that is um, basically covering this entire project. And then I started working on this one. And this block is different. I'm going to see if I can't zoom in so that you can see this. So, I, I mean, the flowers themselves are cross-stitched. And then in the background, you can barely see it. It's called a darning stitch. It's like an itty bitty teeny tiny, sorry my nose it just because of course, um, it, like a teeny tiny, it's worked like back, stri back stitch but you skip every hole, um, or you skip a thread. So it's like you back stitch, skip a thread, back stitch, skip a thread. But it's tiny and it's one stranded so you can barely see it but it's just like, it's just like a golden background that's barely visible there. I really like it, but it's tedious. You know, it takes it takes a long time because 
this is 36 count fabric and so you know it's it's not a quick process by any means so I worked on that and I didn't get it quite done before my week two started so that's that and so that will come out again eventually so that I can finish up that darning stitch and keep moving okay next uh, my week two is my heaven and earth designs week I'm gonna steal a sip of coffee real quick okay this mug makes an appearance on every single one of my videos where I'm drinking coffee because it's my big you know it's like a gigantic mug I love it. hot coffee good okay so week two is my heaven and earth designs week as I just stated and so this time I decided to pull out um, In This Moment by Jeremiah Kettner. And um, I'll be honest, I didn't get a whole lot done on this. The biggest reason is because one of the sows started shortly after. Okay, so my current rotation refreshes on Fridays. One of my sows started the following Sunday, so there wasn't a whole lot of time. So, what I got done was, I finished the third column there. I had part of it done and I just finished, it was basically like maybe 150 stitches down in there. So not much progress here, um, but that is kind of to be expected. Oh, me. The lighting in here is so bad, but, I mean, you get the idea. It's like a dark purpley multicolored background. It's pretty. And I love this piece, and I can't wait for my next Heaven and Earth Designs week because this is probably going to be my Heaven and Earth project for a little while. So I worked on like two of my gigantic projects this week, or this, this last two weeks. So there's that in this moment. Jeremiah Kettner, Heaven and Earth Designs, huge, gigantic, love it. Okay, so the Sunday after um, Sunday, January the 10th, so a week ago today, um, I started along with just about everybody the Clouds Factory Postcards from the World uh, year long stitch along. And I just got block one done. So I'm gonna, you can see here that I got the center block, the center uh, frame done, and then I worked my way up diagonally to stitch the, uh, the first frame and then fill it in. And so I'll bring it in close here. This took far, far, far too long. A couple of reasons. First of all, I don't like stitching with just white. It's kind of driving me crazy. I love, love, love what some people are doing. Um, I know that um, there's somebody on Stitch Mania that sort of colored the frame, like in the colors of the Italian flag, so it's, um, I don't know the order, but I think it's red, white, and green. So it's like there's a portion that's red, and then the middle is white, and then the end is green, so it looks like the Italian flag. I think that's so cool. Um, I'm such a conformist that I just went with the pattern and I'm just doing what it told me to. But um, I really do like that idea. And I don't like stitching with white. And then, as I'm working on it, I messed up. Not once, not twice, but three times. For whatever reason, I think the reason that I kept messing up is because I don't stitch upwards very well. I can stitch down, which is why I wanted to make sure I got to here first. Because I can stitch to the left and I can or to the right. And I can stitch down without problem. Um, but stitching upwards for whatever reason, I just get all miscombobulated. And um, I think it's because of the way that I stitch. Um, because I do bottom left to top right and then bottom right to top left. But if I'm working upwards, that bottom right to top left, it gets confusing. So I have to like rearrange my stitches. 
I don't know. It's confusing. It drives me crazy, but, you know, I had to do what I had to do to get to this point, so I did it. The reason this took me so long is because I didn't have... <laughs> And this is going into the name of this video here. The blue in there, in like the little windows of the um, of the building there. And I didn't look up what that building is. I know that the cathedral, the um, that is um, San Marcos Compañía, Compañía, Compañía. I don't know. I'm I'm better at Spanish than French. Or <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself. I'm better at Spanish than Italian. Um, anyway, the blue I didn't have, and that is uh, DMC 797. Okay, so here's the story. I didn't have DMC 797. And my schedule, um, I normally work from noon to 8. So by the time I get to a craft store, they're already closed after I get out of work. So I kept forgetting to go before I went to work to try to pick up this color. Um, there was another one, the 754 there, um, I didn't have. So I kept forgetting and I kept forgetting. So finally, my fiancé was like, look, tell me the numbers and I'll go pick them up. I'm in the office on Friday. I'll go get them. No problem. So I'm like, sweet, that's awesome. Well... That was not to be, because, like I said, I ended up in the hospital, and we were in the ER until 1 in the morning, and so he never had a chance to go to pick up those colors for me. Um, he offered, but I wasn't letting him leave my side. So, um, yeah, didn't wasn't able to get the colors that I needed, so... On Friday. So Saturday morning we had a couple errands to run. I had to go get my prescriptions and whatnot. And so while we're out, I'm like, let's stop by the craft store so I can get the colors that I'm missing. So we go and I grab the colors that I'm missing. There was these two here and then there's one that I was missing for a pumpkin passport. And I get the colors, get home, wind the floss, and realize that it calls for $7.97, and I grabbed $7.96. So, I'm like, I'm like totally disappointed because, you know, we went to all this effort to try to make sure we could get one stinking DMC, and I still got the wrong one. I couldn't believe it. Um, I should have checked while we were at the store to make sure that I was getting the right one, but I just didn't because I was tired and whatever. Anyway. So I posted this story on Stitch Mania, and you know, a bunch of us, we had a good laugh about it, like, way to go, Jess, you know, like, way to pay attention. I was throwing myself a little pity party. And uh, at one point, Tracy commented, and she said, you should just use the 796. And I'm like, yeah, you know, this is the fates trying to tell me something. Like, I'm not meant to have 797 for whatever reason. And if I get 797, like, I'm doomed. So I'm just going to go with the with 796. They're close enough. It's a deep, dark blue. It's fine. It'd be fine. So um, I just went with it. And in the meantime, she was like, and, you know, for the fates, you should probably, like, post a video or something. <laughs> you know, like, being cheeky. Like, I need to post a video. So that's what this is. This is my offering to the fates saying, like, I'm doing everything for you, please don't put me back in the hospital. <laughs> if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes, and that's what I will do. So, anyway, so, Tracy, this is what you get. You're welcome. Anywho, uh, yeah, so I got it done. And the blue is wrong, and I don't even care. Because it looks nice. I mean, you know, it's a nice blue. It's a deep dark blue. Whatever. It's the same thing. The fabric here is its own story. Um, this fabric is um, 28 count Monet Cachelle. Um, and it's hand dyed by Picture This Plus. And it's a beautiful, beautiful model purples. Ain't that gorgeous? 
I love it. I just said ain't. <laughs> I think it's so pretty. Um, and I will go more into the story of that fabric when I get to haul. Um, but I love this, and I will work on February when it's February. Okay, so there's that. My next work in progress is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries Pumpkin Passport. And this I started yesterday. And this is kind of ironic. Because, well, I'll go ahead and show it to you first. Because it's on my 30-inch bars because of the fabric. And so I got the wording done and the top gold border and part of the, the green border on the top there. So that color there for the lettering, it's charted for Weeks Dye Works 1306, which is navy. I ordered 1309, which is Michael's navy. So apparently, I can't win with dark blue. <laughs> I mean, like, I just can't get the right dark blue. It's fine. I don't even care. Um, I also really like this blue. It is very, very quietly variegated. Um, I'm never going to be able to show it on camera. I have attempted to take a picture of it to show the, the variegation, and I just can't. Um, so either my eyes are making it up, or it's just that subtle. Um, but I love, I love how dark it is. And I think it's beautiful. So I don't, I'm not worried about it. And so I went ahead and got the lettering done there. Which was a lot of fun. I really love the text that they used for this. I love the, um, the L and the R over there. Yeah, I think those are really pretty. I have a thing for um, for good fonts, so love that. And I will continue working on this today. Um, technically, this past Friday started my focus for a finished week, so I'm supposed to be working on a project that's my focus, but because this one just started, I'm going to try to get block one done today. If I don't get the whole border done, that's fine. I will continue to work on that as we progress. So the fabric here is uh, 32 count in Properly Primitive by Under the Sea Fabrics. And can I just say that I am obsessed with this fabric? Oh my god. Okay. So you can see the greens. It's a very, I mean, it's a very tan neutral color. Very, very subtly, very, um, subtly dyed. You can see the greens. What is harder to see is the pops of orange. And I'm trying to see if I can't see any of it. There's like a rusty color here down in the bottom. Oh, I love it. I think it's just so pretty. It is very, very primitive. Um, I totally get the Leslie's naming. It's just perfect. And it's beautiful fabric. So there's that. And so I will continue working on that. Oh, my needle miner there. Gina's my little owl guy. And so those are my whips, y'all. Not too shabby. Um, I've worked on quite a lot in the last two weeks. I'm actually kind of surprised. Considering, like, all of the work that I put in and then all of, like, the extra shenanigans. Uh, last Saturday, we had... Not yesterday, but last Saturday. We had an appointment with a coordinator for our um, wedding and reception. But that was a four-hour drive south and a four-hour drive back, all in the same day. Um, so, sorry, hiccup. Um, so, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of stitching accomplished that Saturday. But, like, there's been a lot going on, and I've still made pretty good progress on some things. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I am reaching my goal of actually stitching in 2016. One of the goals that I had set for myself that I've already lost is that I wanted to stitch every single day, and I haven't been able to do that. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but part of that is because I was involved in a readathon, uh, January 4th through 10th. Yeah. And so I was really focused on, on achieving my reading goals, and I did. So that's exciting. 
Anyway, let's get to the haul. Because I do have some haul here. I'm going to reach down here for this mountain of stuff. Okay, so some of this is Christmas haul and some of it is not. Um, so we'll just, just go with it. So the first thing I got is actually, okay, we'll just go with it. Okay, so the first thing I have here is Gypsy Queen by Mirabilia. This was a total impulse buy. It was, it released on December 15th, and so I ordered it. <laughs> um, and I got it through uh, Under the Sea Fabrics, through Leslie. And so she sent it with my Fabric of the Month. And then I also got the embellishments. Oh, no, I didn't get the embellishments. Wait. I did. Hold on. I'm going to grab... beads. Gypsy Queen's got some beads. Let's see, what are my favorites? Oh, I love the crystals. And the multicolored ones in there. That's pretty. So yeah, there's that. And then uh, the threads, like I had shown you originally. So what do we have here? We have three Krennics, um, all various golds is what it looks like. One's more coppery, but three golds there. I like the middle one, that pale gold. It's actually um, pretty close to my wedding color gold. So there's those. And then there are three Karen Water Lilies. Uh, the first one here is African Sunset. Not that purple. It's much more red. No. It's it's red. Uh, reds and oranges. Very lovely. Uh, this one, very similar. Oh, that's cool. Um, this is... Um, Antique rose, and so you can see they're they're very close together. Again, more red than purple, although the antique rose does have some purple in it. I was looking on the back here. There's this designation on the back. It says UTSF under the sea fabrics. So Leslie must have like a little cute little stamp. That's very cool. And then the last one is Karakum, K-A-R-A-K-U-M. That's pretty, that's pretty true. Mm, again, more red than purple, but I guess pretty close in color family. So there's that. Loved those, very pretty. Not sure on a start date for Gypsy Queen, but that's okay. Oh, and there's a, a whisper for her. Huh. Okay. Well, I'll have to get that. Oh, and there's blending in this one, too. Fun. I love blending. It's fine. No big deal. Um, and that came with my fabric of the month, like I said which was, um, it's my fat quarter of 32 count linen, January, is this January? Is it Jan, yeah, January, um, Winter Brook. And so I will pull that out of the plastic. I haven't even seen it yet, the sticker was still on it. Ooh, pretty. Gorgeous little blues and grays. Love that. There's something pretty going on that. I don't know what, but something pretty. Ooh, maybe, maybe. I'm not giving voice to that maybe yet, but uh, there's something pretty going on that for sure. Okay, so then 
for my Harry Potter um, Birdie Bots Box of Delights. I was having a real struggle with Neville, um, with the best color to represent for Neville. And somebody said that I should use, um, like, greens because he was the Herbology champ. And at first I didn't think that I had a really good set of greens. Um, so I had to order some. And I looked on Moe's first, and I didn't see anything that I was totally loving. So I ordered some from Fiberlicious. So this one is uh, Poison Ivy, which would have been cool. Oh my gosh, not blue. Do I have... Not blue. Green. But, you know, do what we can. Is that better? No, not really. Okay, well, anyway, we'll do what we can to show these. Um, and then I also got Midnight Forest to give that a try. Oh, there we go. So that shows you the difference. There's the green into the blue. Liked that a lot. And then this one I got because I liked it. This is Peony Blush. Pinks and Purples. Love that. These are all Fiberlicious uh, Inspiring Yummy Hand Dyed Fire Fibers. Um, and they are her cottons. And then I got a grab bag. So I'm just going to go through and show these real quick. I got... Oh, maybe Peony Blush was part of the grab bag. Maybe. Because I think her grab bags are 10 skeins. Um, and I'm only counting 9 here. I don't know. It was a long time ago that I ordered these. Because, you know, I finished um, Box of Delights quite a while ago. Okay, so this is Spring Blossom. So, purples and blues and greens. Very soft. Um, this one's fun. This is Tahiti. Very vibrant, although not showing very well, but that's okay. Um, I love this one because it's my favorite color. This is Cornflower. Very purpley. Deep dark blue there at the bottom. Very gorgeous. I may have to order some more of this and stitch like a monochromatic or something with that. That's gorgeous. Um, this is Cappuccino. So that's fun. Pink and brown. Also gorgeous. Um, if the brown there was more goldy, like, like that shimmery gold, that would really be my, my wedding colors. Uh, then we have, uh, Jungle Cruise. Kind of makes me think of, um, like, like, Pontchartrain. Never been, but, uh, we watch X-Men, so, you know. Um, but, like, the water and then the swampy green there. Very cool. Ooh, this one's cool. Uh, this is Antique Bliss. Black, blue, and pink. That's fun. Kind of makes me think of like a demented clown. I don't know why. It's just the way my brain works, guys. Uh, Earth and Sky. Very appropriate. Pretty. Um, this is Cosmic Chaos. Oh, yeah. I get that. That's so cool. Very pretty. I, I need to find ways to use these threads. And then the last one is Orchid Orgy. <laughs> Love that name. Gwen, you're so creative. Gwen, if you're watching this, seriously, you're fantastic with naming. I love that. Orchid Orgy. Okay. And so those were my... Fiberlicious uh, cottons that I got. So, fun, fun, fun. Um, let's see. Then I got, um, I know that I talked to you guys about how I had to go get those threads. I'm going to put that light back because I don't like that. Oh, well, I'm never going to get it back to where it was, but that's fine. We're, we're close to done here, actually. I had to go get those threads, and so, you know, I had to use my coupon on something. So I got uh, 25 count Lugana. 
This is something that I noticed that um, Hobby Lobby does, uh, which is kind of weird. Okay, so you see it's by Witchell or Zweigart. Who's it by? I don't understand. And it's like the same piece of paper. I don't get it. <laughs> so I don't even know who this who this is by, but this is the Lugana that I buy all the time. Uh, for my heaven and earth designs, this is a fat quarter, so 18 by 27. So pretty decent size heaven and earth can go in there. I'm not planning on starting a heaven and earth design, guys. Or am I? I might be. I don't know. I'm feeling that urge, you know? You know that itch that the only thing that can scratch it is the thing that is causing the urge? <sighs> okay. Uh, next thing is something that I got for Christmas. Um, and I totally, totally needed it. First thing is um, some more labels for my tiny bead storage tray. Um, because I found that these sheets, they're not great. Like, they're not the best quality of stickers, but they work. So, got those. And then, uh, that's another 96 label, so that's good. And then... My second bead storage tray because this is where I'm at guys I need a second one I have so many beads that aren't in my other tray um, and like I'm gonna run out of room so this is like totally necessary so I got that for Christmas and I was so pumped um, because I can finally get my bead or beads organized so I will have to do that here pretty soon okay the last thing that I have to talk to you about is um, as far as cross stitch is concerned is my fabrics here. Okay, so here's this story. I signed up to do both Frosted Pumpkin, Frosted Pumpkin and Clouds Factory, their year-long stitch longs. And I was going back and forth on fabric and it finally, it got to be too late um, to order a, a special hand dyed like from Leslie or Stephanie or anything like that. So what I did is on December the 5th, that date will stick out to me. Um, I ordered the called for fabrics. Now, one, two, three stitch had ale for pumpkin passport for a very long time, and then they didn't. And then um, ABC ABC Stitch Therapy had rosewood, but they didn't have ale for some reason. Um, and rosewood is for Clouds Factory. So, I'm like, well, what the heck am I going to do? I don't really feel like placing two separate orders because I know me. I would have to, you know, I'd be, I, I, I would feel obligated to spend more money than is necessary. So, I placed my order with Stitching Bits and Bobs on December the 5th because the website said they had rosewood and they had ale. So, I'm like, fine, I'll just order it from one place. Today is January the 17th, and I don't have it yet. And I know that Stitching Bits and Bobs, like, they, they don't really have that in stock. They just have to get it so that they can ship it out. But, like, I didn't think it was going to take over six weeks. Um, I gave ample time. I ordered it over a month in advance. I thought for sure... I'd have it by now. You know, like I thought for sure I'd have at least the uh, the ale to do Frosted Pumpkin on its start date. What I didn't know was that Stitching Bits and Bobs goes on a, um, a two-week vacation um, starting January the 1st until January the 14th, which I totally get. Like you are totally and completely entitled to your winter vacation. No problem there. But there was no communication to me of that. And I'm, uh, like, I'm frustrated because I ordered them over a month in advance. And, like, there's been no communication, which I know is kind of their MO. I just wish that somebody had told me that I wasn't going to have them in time. You know? Like, hey, Jess, I know you ordered these fabrics, and um, we're probably not going to be able to get them out until end of January. 
Then I would have been like, okay, cool, fine. But I'm like counting down the days and I'm checking. You can check in your order status on Stitching Bits and Bobs. And I'm checking constantly. And it keeps refreshing the waiting arrival of SO fabrics. And I'm not really sure what that means. Shipped out, maybe. And it's, it's read that for a month now. Um, so I know that they're waiting for the fabrics from PTB. But it's been like that for so long. And then January the 1st hit, and I got the notification by logging into the website, checking my order status, that they were going on their vacation. So I went into kind of panic mode because I'm not very good at keeping up with stitch alongs. I mean, like, you know, I have two Passu Enricamos that are well overdue. And I really wanted to keep up with these. They're small enough that it's totally doable. So, like, I just had to be able to have the fabric so that I could get started on time. And that wasn't going to happen. So, sort of in my distress, I posted on Stitch Mania about it and I'm like does anybody know any fabric dyers that would be able to get fabric to me within a week so that I could start Clouds Factory on time and the general consensus was no because their jan their standard shipping time is like two to three weeks so which I totally get I mean like there's there's fabric dyeing time I had sort of resolved myself to two options order fabric and wait for it well three options just wait for what I ordered from Stitching Bits and Bobs. Order fabric and just wait for it. Or go to 123Stitch and see if I can't find a replacement. And I found a replacement for the Frosted Pumpkin. But the one for Clouds Factory was more complicated. Um, I kind of wanted to stay in a general dye area, uh, color scheme. So Rosewood is kind of a pinky purple. So I kind of wanted to stay around there. Cla or, um, pumpkin Passport is, I might have said that backwards, but Pumpkin Passport is like a neutral, like a darker neutral. Um, so ale, uh, the properly primitive that I'm using, etc. So I logged into 123Stitch and ordered fabric. And so what I ordered was Monet in the 28 count cashel. And then I ordered gingerbread, gingerbread, gingerbread and also in cashel for the frosted pumpkin so I'll just show that so it's like a dark neutral uh, this is also by picture this plus it's very pretty very appropriately named there so I got that and I got that on the Friday before er, yeah the Friday before so it got here in plenty of time then, the most beautiful, wonderful, amazing Leslie for Under the Sea Fabrics contacted me on Facebook and she's like, look, I've got some things. Um, I'll go through my stash and see what I've already got that's already dyed and cut that, um, that I can send to you. And I, like, almost passed out. I was like, this is amazing. Like, <laughs> what words, you know? So Leslie looked through her stuff and she said, all right, so here's what I've got. And so I'll be happy to send it out to you. You should have it within the week. Um, and then she said that she would just stick the bill with my fabric of the month bill. I'm like, Leslie, you are so wonderful. Thank you so much for that. She, so she sent me the properly primitive on the cashel, or no, on the Belfast. Yeah, on the Belfast. And then she also sent... This is Misty Morning, and this is on a 28 Count Lugana. Misty Morning is one of those colors that she is retiring. There won't be any more of it available. And she sent me a beloved piece of it. And I know a lot of people really like Misty Morning, and I totally understand why. Pinky, purpley... It's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. So these fabrics from Leslie and from 123Stitch arrived on the same day. While I was in conversation with Leslie, I completely forgot that I had placed that order with 123Stitch. So I opened the package and I'm like, 
whoops ease oh well so um yeah so I kind of did a comparison and I'm like okay do I do Monet or do I do Lugana the uh, misty morning and so I posted to Stitch Mania with a floss toss for both of them and I'm like hey guys which one do you think I should do and the Misty Morning won by a landslide. I mean, it was it was like 30 to 2 kind of a thing. Um, and I was like totally in agreement. I was like super excited. Um, I was ready to get started. And I'm so sad because the cut is um, 16 inches. No. It's either 15 and a half or 16 of um, usable fabric space. The Klaus Factory design on 28 count is 14 and a half inches. So that would have meant that I had less than an inch on the border, like for framing purposes. So we're talking about like three quarters of an inch. And I'm okay with like an inch, an inch and a half, but less than an inch is kind of, it's kind of cutting it a little bit too close. Um, I make mistakes, as we all do, and, you know, I was terrified that I was going to start in the middle, but it wasn't really the middle, and so I would end up too far on one side, and <sighs> it's a square design, so it's 14 and a half inches horizontally and vertically, so it's not like I could turn the fabric and be okay, because it, it, I would run into the same issue vertically. So I wasn't able to use Misty Morning. Monet is um, 18 inches at its uh, at its widest and um, so that gave me a lot more space to work with for framing purposes or whatever I decided to do with it so that's that that's why Misty Morning is not used now I am on the hunt for something gorgeous to put on this and I'm thinking I might do a mermaid why that's why because Leslie's logo is a mermaid and I just think it would be like sort of an homage a thank you to do um, a mermaid on this so I'm looking at some ideas to see what kind of mermaid I can do I'm looking at Joan Elliott and Mirabilia at Passion Ricamo um, I think Passion Ricamo I think her mermaids are too big um, they normally require a fat half so I'm thinking I'm thinking there's a Mirabilia Mermaid going on this. Um, so I just got to find the right color story to go on top. So that's that. And that is my fabric saga. I was... Uh, so in the meantime, regarding my stitching bits in Bob's order, there's more in that order than just those fabrics. There is a particular set of... Um, charts that are now out of print and you can only get the whole set from Stitching Bits and Bobs so I'm not gonna cancel the order you know like it's the only opportunity that I have for that so I'm just gonna have some more fabric in my stash big whoop <laughs> but I will say this um I don't know that I will ever order from Stitching Bits and Bobs ever again. Because I'm just so... I get it, but at the same time I just wish that there was some communication to me. You know, like I wish that... I wish that I knew what I was getting myself into. Um, I knew that there was going to be some wait time, which is why I ordered over a month in advance. I didn't realize it was going to be like this. And I just checked today and it's still awaiting arrival of SO Fabrics. So, yeah, that's just, you know, it's just, it's discouraging. Like, you think about, like, what Leslie, the manufacturer, did for me to get the fabrics to me in time for the stitch-alongs. The manufacturer went above and beyond, but the vendor, the, um, the shop, is unwilling, like, to even, even reach out. That's, that's crummy. Um, so here's what I say unto you, dear floss tube friends. Support Leslie. Support your manufacturers. Do what you can um, to try to 
show our appreciation for uh, what these diaries do for us because they're wonderful. They're wonderful people who are trying to make a living and I just, I can't thank Leslie enough. I just, it was such a beautiful thing when, when she messaged me. I just, I almost cried because like, you just don't expect that, you know? Like you don't expect, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I appreciate, I appreciate it. So thanks Leslie, you're wonderful. Okay, um, so enough of that sappy stuff. Let's talk about the last two things that I have to talk about. Uh, we're at almost an hour here. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is what I'm knitting. And I'll put up a picture here of what it's supposed to look like when it's done. But this is the Summer Flies shawl. And so here's where I'm at. I am just about done with the last section, excuse me, section before the ruffle border. And so I'm getting very close to done. So started up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and there's this eyelet section. And then the section with butterflies. I don't know if you can see the butterflies. You see those? That's kind of cool. And then another eyelet section. Another section with butterflies. And then what I'm working on now is called uh, knotted open work. So I'm going to see if I can't stretch this out so that you can see it. Isn't that pretty? I love it. The uh, yarn that I'm using here is Madeline Tosh uh, Pashmina, which is a sport weight yarn, and it is merino, cashmere, and silk. So it's, it's a luxurious blend. Very pretty. Um, I had originally purchased this yarn, a whole lot of it, for a, a sweater that I was going to do. Actually, I think you can see it. Um, you see that shelf there? On the bottom, there's like four more skeins of this same color. And that same yarn. And then right there is a skein of pink. Um, it's in the posy colorway. Um, and I will be knitting on that pretty soon here. Uh, but same yarn, um, just different color. But anyway, um, so that is my summer fly shawl. Um, the idea is like the the um, summer goes really fast, um, and this shawl goes really fast. I think I've knit a total of like four days on it, and it's gone really quick. The last rows, the ruffle border, is going to take a long time because I'm going to go from like 100, 190 stitches to 380. It's like doubling the number of stitches to get the ruffling, but uh, nonetheless, loving it. So I will keep working on that, and I expect that I'll have a finished object for you next time I record. And then we'll talk about books. Um, so what I'm going to show you with books is the book that I've most recently finished and the book that I'm currently reading. So the book that I just recently finished is X. Um, and this is a novel by Ilyasa Shabazz, who uh, was one of Malcolm X's daughters, is one of Malcolm X's daughters. This is a novel, um, it's, it's historical fiction, but mostly, fi mostly historical, like it's mostly accurate. Um, it's about Malcolm X's daughters or about Malcolm X before he um, before he became the activist that he did. Um, so we're talking uh, childhood and teenage years and early 20s. Um, so the years leading up to and including the time that he went to prison. And um, so it's just like about, about Malcolm X and where he came from and what his life was before, um, before he became such an icon. And it's really, it's good. Um, and I picked up this book because I had a, I was doing a challenge where I had to read a book with a title that started with X. Which, if you Google books that start with X, there's like six in the world. <laughs> like, it's so hard to find a book that starts with the title of X. Um, this published in January of 2015. 
And so that's the reason that I picked it up. What I didn't expect was how relevant this book is for right now. Um, with the state of things in the world, um, with um, just everything that's going on um, from the, the opinions of the Muslim community um, to um, the issues that the United States is working through, maybe, um, regarding uh, black rights. This book is so relevant to right now. It's amazing. Just like I picked this up and I'm reading through it and I'm like, more people should be reading this because, I don't know, it just, it just felt very important. Um, he, what was most fascinating to me um, that I didn't know was that his family, um, although he was born in Nebraska, they lived in Lansing, Michigan for a very long time. And, you know, I'm from Michigan, so that was kind of cool. Um, but just getting to see where he came from. I didn't know enough about Malcolm X prior to reading this book uh, about his life. I kind of knew what he stood for, but I didn't know about him. And so this is like a peek into, into who he was. Now, this was written by Ilyasa, who barely got to know her father before he was killed. Um, and I think that she was... I think she said she was six months old when he died. So this is, um, that's why you get the historical fiction aspect because there are, there are parts where she took creative liberties. Um, there are characters and obviously conversations that never actually occurred in Malcolm's life. Um, but, you know, there's still, there's still an honesty to it. So very, very cool book. Um, if you are interested, I highly recommend it. Um, it's one of the better, um, not autobiographical books about Malcolm X that, um, I've ever read. So, there's that. Okay. Then, what am I reading now? Like, total, total switch. This is The Search for Wandala. And this is a book that, um, quite honestly, one of my best closest friends uh, has been telling me to read for like two years now. <laughs> um, she loves this series and um, it is middle grade fantasy um, but what's cool about it is there is some seriously cool artwork. Very cool artwork. Let's see if I can find another one. Just some interesting things going on here. Um, I love the artwork, and it's middle grade, so um, it's going to be a fast read. I'm very, very, very little into it, um, but nonetheless, he, uh, the author Tony Dieter Lizzy, um, both wrote and illustrated this book, so it's all it's all his, which is cool. Um, he is also um, responsible for the Spiderwick Chronicles, which a lot of people know about. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm reading now. And that's about it, folks. I don't think that there's anything else that I was going to talk about. Um, I think that I'm going to leave, like, book hauls and knitting hauls out of my episodes here, or my, my videos here. Um, and I'm just going to talk very briefly about those things. Um, no more than a couple minutes each. So tell me what you think. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to go get stitching and enjoy my coffee. And I don't know if you can see it snowing there. You can kind of see the snow on Danny's car a little bit, but you can't see it actively snowing, but just trust me, it's actively snowing. Anyway, um... Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and for all of your comments and your likes. I love you. You're wonderful. Fates, you better be pleased by this. I did it for you. <laughs> all right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.